Hello, I'm Annelise Borges and you're watching Tech24. Coming up in the program, a charm offensive à la française. During an eight-hour swing through the tech capital of the world, François Hollande woos Silicon Valley's giants. San Francisco, California. This is the place where tomorrow's world is being invented. And a film festival for movies made with smartphones. We take a look at the ninth edition of the Paris Mobile Film Festival. In the first official trip by a French president to California in 30 years, François Hollande hoped to convince Silicon Valley companies that he's making France a better country in which to invest and pay taxes. During his visit to San Francisco, Hollande hosted a lunch for executives from Facebook and Google and Twitter. But the French president made sure to underscore that he was also there to address the brain drain. Hundreds of French startups have moved to Silicon Valley, where the tech scene is more diverse and the pool of potential investors and customers is larger than anywhere else in the world. Julien arrived in San Francisco just a few days ago. His goal? To become rich. How? By building his pet-sitting website. It's like an Airbnb for dogs that allows you to find a pet sitter to take care of your pets when you're on vacation. The 30-year-old Julien tried to develop his startup in France, but he left because there weren't enough investors. French investors tell me the French market is too small, you have to have more ambition. And when I say, OK, I can expand to Europe, they say, hmm, it's too risky. It's always the same thing with French investors. And here in the States, however, they say, it's great, how much do you need? I've been here only a week, and I already have three or four contacts ready to invest money. In France, there's no way I could raise that kind of money. It's incredible to think that we need the Americans to fund us, but here you go. Startups also rely on angel investors and venture capitalists, which have helped make Silicon Valley what it is today. Jeff Clavier is the most sought-after French investor here. Je brûle des calories en faisant des emails. Clavier has raised more than $170 million and invested in more than 140 startups. But he warns that Silicon Valley is a very competitive place that involves taking risks. Out of 100 startup companies, the number of funded companies which end up going under is around 70 or 80. More than 50,000 French nationals are working in the San Francisco Bay Area. High-tech giants like Google, Facebook and even PayPal have hired French engineers. David Marcus feels right at home. Sounds so nice. Six years ago, Marcus sold his startup to the payment giant for $240 million. Today, he's the president of PayPal. If you have that fire burning inside, this desire to work hard and succeed, and the talent to do so, if you have all this, then you should definitely come to the Silicon Valley. It's an opinion shared by Carlos Diaz, a French CEO who has been living in San Francisco for six years. Carlos hopes that François Hollande has been inspired by Silicon Valley's ecosystem. President Hollande wants to sell his so-called responsibility pact for businesses, not only to French companies, but also to American giants and entrepreneurs, because he knows that's the right way to create jobs. He's right to come here, wearing the suit of a sales representative and trying to sell France. Given his goal of improving France's image in Silicon Valley and reassuring French entrepreneurs, his five-hour visit in San Francisco might not have been enough for the challenge. Liam Bulger from the Rude Baguette joins me now. Liam, there are 60,000 French nationals in California. It's one of the biggest diasporas, French diasporas. And French experts say that Mr. Hollande faces an even tougher question when it comes to keeping the next generation of techies here in France. What, in your opinion, might make them stay? Well, I think the first thing is you have to realize that you're not trying to keep them here. You're trying to make the environment such that, they, that there is no reason to leave. The, pro the reason there's so many people in France uh, leaving to go to the Silicon Valley, which has been happening since the 80s, this isn't a recent phenomenon, 60,000 people didn't leave overnight. They went there because there were better opportunities. So I think the best thing that can be done is to eliminate all the barriers in France which are inhibiting these same type of opportunities. 
Now, uh, François Hollande announced measures to promote internet companies in France, including easier terms for crowdfunding and stock options, introducing computer science in middle school, loosening French visa requirements for as many as 10,000 engineers a year, and making it possible to complete all official procedures in France online. Is this enough, Liam, to stimulate investor interest in this country? Well, this is certainly a start. If you look at it, the idea is you have to eliminate the barriers before you start paving new roads for opportunities. So right now, France is in a position where it needs to eliminate the barriers that it's created over the past few years, which has been used to protect the industry that it has. And, and as it becomes a more global economy, more involved with what's around it, it'll eliminate these barriers and it won't necessarily make people go to France, but it'll stop them from instantly saying France is not a possibility. François Hollande, formally, when he formally stated why he was in San Francisco, he said something along the lines of, we want these internet giants to come to France and mm -hmm. invest in France. And then he went on to say, we aren't afraid of them. Afraid of them? Do you think that he succeeded in conveying his message in San Francisco? I think he might have accidentally explained more about what the French government's relationship is to these companies than he would have liked to. I think, frankly, today the government is in a tough position. On the one hand, they go to Google, Facebook, and Twitter, and all those executives that he had lunch with, and they say, how can we get you to pay more taxes based on the revenue you're making off our citizens? And those companies keep turning around and saying, we follow all the legal procedures that your country and the European Union has put in place. And so by saying we're not afraid, I think what he's actually saying is that they are afraid. I think he's saying that we haven't yet figured out the solution, otherwise we would have put it into place. And every time they come up with one, that it seems to not work and there's a way to circumvent it. And so really there's, a, there's an intellectual problem where as soon as enough brains are put onto the problem of how to make this system of, of internet taxes and, and companies based in Dublin paying more equitable tax rates across the European Union, I think there will be a, a better equilibrium between uh, the companies and, and the French government. Finally, in your opinion, was this a successful trip for François Hollande and for France? Well, if the goal was for François Hollande to put most of the attention on the technology industry and maybe off of other recent events, then I, I think he did a good job. People are spending a lot more time talking about him and Obama and, and him and taxes than him and other things. And so in that respect, I think it's a big success. Uh, whether it's going to get people to rethink how they look at France, I don't know. I, I don't think I don't think he's quite there yet. Most most of the words that were were being underscored about the trip were talk is nice, but now we need action. And so if Oron comes around in the next months, in the next six months, and proposes actual changes that will actually get rid of some of the things he's saying he wants to get rid of, then I think it will have been a success. All right, thank you for that, Liam Boger from The Rude Baguette. And now, in other news, tech businesses may be facing trouble here in France, but cinema certainly is not. And as proof that the seventh art continues strong, the Mobile Film Festival, now in its ninth year, focuses on a very specific segment within the movie industry, that of lights, smartphone camera, and action. Et alors? Big pictures for filmmakers on a small budget. Take a look at Vicious Circle, a film by Sylvain Sertin. The young director is making movie magic with the simplest of tools, his cell phone. Camera-ready mobile technology means Sertin can even turn a profit. Everyone has a mobile phone in their pocket ready to make a film. The idea seems simple because making a professional movie requires a lot of money, while with a phone it costs nothing. It's a new trend that started to really take off in the last three or four years, and I hope it continues because it's opening up great possibilities and great perspectives. But don't let the modesty of the equipment fool you. Sertin's films tackle serious issues like cyber-stalking. This short won him the ninth edition of the Mobile Film Festival, celebrating work produced by mobile technology with the same respect and fanfare given to cinema's greats. There's a master of ceremony, a prestigious jury, and 50 filmmakers get to see their work up on the big screen. All a sign that in a few years, the mobile phone could be the next big thing in production. 
How are we going to use something ordinary to make something exceptional? Uh, the technology is becoming sharper and sharper. In terms of the quality, it is impressive. Everyone can make a film, but not everyone can make something with an impact. Jury President Jean-Pierre Genet, the director behind Amélie Poulain, is a big advocate of the miniature movies. It amused me to watch minute-long films. I've been part of juries in many festivals. We watched films that lasted two hours, it can be a bit tedious. But here, if it's painful, it only lasts a minute. And once you get going, you can't stop. The winner takes away 15,000 euros to fund another short film. And it's all thanks to today's high-end smartphone, which packs a virtual film studio right in your pocket. And that's all we have time for. Thanks for tuning in to another edition of Tech24. Don't forget, you can get in touch with us on Facebook or on Twitter. Our hashtag is Tech24. And we leave you today with images of the fish on wheels. What you see there is a goldfish driving its tank around by swimming around in its tank. Using a camera and computer vision software, a team at Studio Dip made it possible for this fish to control a robot car over land. By swimming towards an interesting object, the fish can explore the world beyond the limits of its aquarium. Thanks for watching. Stay with us here on France 24. Thank you.